What's up biology students? Mr. Holloway here. In today's video, we're going to talk about another really important class of organic molecule. Today, we're going to talk about the lipids. The molecules that we call lipids include a lot of substances you've probably heard of. Substances like fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. We tend to think of these things as being bad for us because of their association with weight gain, obesity, and athletic scandals in the case of steroids, but lipids are absolutely essential for life, and they are certainly not all bad for us, not by a long shot. Unlike the other organic molecules we've learned about, lipids are not composed of monomers and polymers. Instead, lipids are composed of a glycerol molecule attached to one or more fatty acid chains. These fatty acid chains are hydrophobic, meaning they do not mix with water, and this is one of the most important properties of a lipid molecule. Because of this property, lipids make excellent waterproof coverings. In fact, a waterproof covering made of lipids surrounds each and every cell in our body, and we call this covering the cell membrane. Lipids are also used to store long-term energy. In one of our previous videos, we talked about how overconsuming carbohydrates can lead to weight gain because carbs that cannot be used relatively quickly are converted and stored as fat. That fat contains a lot of energy, but can build up and cause health problems if that energy goes unused. In times of shortage, or when extra energy is needed, our bodies can break this fat back down and release the energy stored inside. Some animals, like the humpback whales, use stored fat to keep themselves alive for months at a time without eating. And this is also how animals like grizzly bears can hibernate for the entire winter without waking up to look for food. Let's take a closer look at the structure of a typical lipid molecule. As you can see, carbon atoms, symbolized here with the letter C, make up a significant portion of this molecule. Carbon atoms make up the main structure of the glycerol molecule, color-coded here in blue, as well as the main structure of the fatty acid chains attached to that glycerol molecule, color-coded here in red. If you look really closely, you can see that every carbon atom, every C, has exactly four covalent bonds, keeping in mind that a double bond or a double line is pretty much the same thing as two covalent bonds. Interestingly, although the fatty acids that make up a lipid molecule are hydrophobic, meaning they do not mix with water, the glycerol portion of a lipid molecule is just the opposite. Glycerol is hydrophilic, meaning it has an affinity for water. Remember how water molecules are polar molecules? Well, glycerol is also a polar molecule, and that's why it's hydrophilic, and it is quite literally attracted to water molecules. Fatty acids are nonpolar and are hydrophobic as a result. This dual nature of lipid molecules is why they arrange themselves in this manner when they come into contact with water. In this picture, we are looking at what is called a lipid bilayer, which is literally a double layer of lipids. The glycerol portion of a lipid points towards the water because both water and glycerol are polar molecules and are therefore attracted to each other like the north and south poles of a magnet are attracted to each other. Fatty acid chains point inwards because they are repelled by water, just like what happens when you put the north pole of one magnet next to the north pole of another magnet. This lipid bilayer is exactly how cell membranes are arranged. In this picture, we see a small section of a cell membrane, the flexible waterproof covering that surrounds every cell in our bodies. The glycerol heads of each lipid point either into the cell, because the cytoplasm that fills the cell is made mostly of water, or they point out of the cell because the space between our cells is also filled with water. The fatty acid chains line up in the middle of the bilayer, helping to keep the cytoplasm in the cell and helping to keep other unwanted substances out. We can also see a few other important molecules embedded in the cell membrane, including proteins, which will be the focus of our next video, and carbohydrates, which we talked about previously. These molecules help the cell to communicate with other cells and regulate the movement of materials entering and exiting the cell. So our cell membranes are not made up entirely of lipids, but lipids are the main structural component, the molecules that hold our cells together. Lipids serve several other important functions as well. Some hormones, called steroid hormones, are also lipid molecules. Steroids are a subclass of lipids. All steroids have a similar shape composed of four carbon rings, as depicted in this picture. When you think of steroids, you probably think of the steroids that some infamous athletes have taken in an attempt to gain a competitive edge. 
This is definitely a problem because using steroids without consulting a doctor can be extremely dangerous. But steroids are found naturally in our bodies and do a number of really important jobs. Cholesterol is probably the best known steroid in the body, although you may not have known it was a steroid. Some cholesterols make up important structures in our cell membranes, and others help us to synthesize important compounds like hormones and vitamin D. The hormones that control our sexual development and our progression through adolescence into adulthood are steroids. And you should notice that they all have pretty much the same overall structure as a cholesterol. These hormones are secreted into the blood, where they circulate around the body until they get to where they need to go. Because these hormones are lipids, they can easily pass through our cell membranes in order to get inside and do their job. Although lipids serve many important functions, some are better for us than others. Such is the case with saturated and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats are called saturated because they have as many hydrogen atoms attached to them as possible. That's because every bond in the fatty acid chain is a single bond, as you can see here in this picture. Unsaturated fats contain one or more double bonds, and as you can see, this carbon-carbon double bond means this fatty acid has fewer hydrogen atoms attached. It is less than full, therefore it is unsaturated. Saturated fats are generally, but not always, solid at room temperature, and are generally considered to be bad for your health, at least in anything more than small amounts. Unsaturated fats are generally liquid at room temperature, and are generally considered to be better for your health. However, life is never quite as simple as that. These things that we call trans fats are unsaturated, and they, like saturated fats, have been correlated with poor health conditions when consumed frequently. Cholesterol is much the same. Some cholesterols, called low-density lipoproteins, or LDLs, are waxy and tend to build up inside of our veins and arteries, which can lead to blockages and even things like heart attacks. LDLs are the bad cholesterols. Other cholesterols, called high-density lipoproteins, or HDLs, help our bodies to remove the bad cholesterols and keep our veins and arteries open and running smoothly. Yet another example of how some lipids are good for you and some are not. There are some rules we can follow, though, in terms of choosing the right lipids for our diet. Vegetables, eggs, nuts, and fish all contain a lot of these so-called good fats, lipids that are beneficial to our bodies. Deep-fried foods, butter, cream, cheeses, and a lot of highly processed foods like potato chips all contain more of these so-called bad fats, the saturated fats and the trans fats. So watch what you eat, and make sure you limit your intake of the bad fats. You'll be healthier, and you'll probably live longer. And that's the deal with lipids. They may not be all good for you, but some of them are absolutely necessary for supporting life, and they serve many vital functions in our bodies, from protecting our cells in the case of the lipids that make up our cell membranes, to aiding in our maturation and development in the case of the hormones like testosterone and estrogen. And with that, I will bring our video to a close. Remember, you can go back and watch this video as many times as you would like until you really feel like you understand what these lipid molecules are all about.